So here we are. I want to demonstrate more cutting around posts and we get a lot of requests for this because uh, it's probably one of the hardest things I think for people to do. And this piece has uh, on the back posts, uh, the, the post sits flat uh, to, the, to the interior of the chair and it also is around a curve so it's a little tricky. The front um, is not as tricky, but there's something to learn on that. So I, I've done other cuts um, around posts before, but not quite like this one. And another added factor to this one is it has to be pulled really tight because the fabric just barely fits under the back rail, and I'll show you that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I have the fabric loose here. I've cut three inches bigger like uh, overall like I usually do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to staple the uh, cover on from the, the back to the front, no more but it's going to be tight. So that's what makes cutting hard because what it does is it folds the it folds the fabric unnaturally so that you have to think about the cutting. And we got some good feedback from some of the other uh, videos that we've done with cutting and some of the way the explanations seem to work for people. So we're going to try to you know use some of those same explanations. But let's first do the work that we need to do on this, which is to staple the back on the front. You see my other videos, we don't just start with stapling sometimes. Uh, we pin tack or pin staple in, the, in this case because, I want to show you, that back rail, the, the, the upholstery is so tight to the back rail, I don't think I'm going to have to uh, redo the back. So what I'm going to do is pull that through and just staple it and then pull it forward and pin staple it to the front because we may have to pull it to the front again. I don't hope you guys got that. but. Uh, bottom line is you need to make sure that your fabric is tight front to back or back to front in order to make the proper read or cuts on this. And like I said, you're going to see it's not going to be a, it's not always a 90 degree angle, you know, or 45 degree angle with your cutting. So let's get going. I'm just going to put this down like this. I'm going to try on this fabric here. It's a little graining, so I'm not even going to bother to measure side to side to get an exact center because I use my eye when I have a grain fabric like this to make sure that, you know, that it's centered. So I'm going to try to get this tucked underneath this rail, which is really a task because it's really tight. That's, that's what distinguishes these pieces of furniture. Is that, is that, you see that? Is how tight that is. Turn this around. I'm going to staple this down. It has to be secured before we do any cutting, right? over here. <laughs> so for all you guys, we just came back. We, we had a great class today over in Lexington. We're doing this on, uh, uh, a live class with 11 people that we're teaching all at once. And um, that's going to be coming up on the website at Broadway Upholstery School. So you guys, if you already haven't uh, looked at that site, um, you should go to that Broadway Upholstery School to see what we're doing. We're really excited about uh, the online classes that we're offering. We think the value is in the knowledge. There's so much knowledge that's being okay. So we had a customer come in. We're just going to keep going. By the way, we have live. We have a live shop here at Upholstery on Broadway. Anything can happen. Anybody could walk through that door. We have a barber shop to the left, a caterer to the right, and down a couple of doors down, we have a wonderful bakery here in Arlington, Massachusetts. For all you local people, uh, breadboard uh, bakery. It's wonderful. If you ever want to want to. Uh, some baked goods. But anyhow, let's get back to this. So I'm going to pull this straight down and I'm going to just stay for that because that rail is really holding the fabric tight. I'm satisfied that that's going to be okay. But let's just do that. So what I'm not going to do is go too close to the post. So I, I just stapled in a four or five inch area. I've got to give myself a little bit of room to fold and cut on the other side. So now what I'm going to do opposite opposite way I have my staples to the back is pull it tight and I, I'm not going to staple this all the way. I want to make sure that it's pulled tight enough and I'll be able to adjust it if I don't staple those all the way in. I'll be able to take them off and do a little adjusting, right? Done. Okay, so now you have to go to the back, you have to do the hard cuts first. You have to do the back cuts first, not the front cuts. And the reason for that is we might have to stretch it more. Uh, and the other reason, the good reason, is that after that's cut, we secure around the post with the pleats, and then we need to st stretch out this side, which isn't, which isn't secured on purpose, and then we cut the front post. Does that make sense to you guys? So I'm going to tilt this. Actually, I'm going to bring this down to the floor and uh, show you. 
So this is what makes it hard. <coughs> I had an engineer in my class once, you guys, and we just came from this very active class over in Lexington. We have 11 people, all different types of people take the class. But I remember an engineer was so frustrated with these cuts because they see, they see things differently, I'm convinced. Engineers see things differently. He was so frustrated, he, he had an upholstered back. He took the back off and he put his head, I caught him, I came over and his head was through here and he was trying to look, get a different view of the, of the cuts. So that's how frustrated he was. So I know when I first started how frustrating it was too. And I have a student, online student, who has a good idea, and I've given this tip out, is so you can do muslin, you can, you can practice on fabric you don't care about, and practice these cuts before you do your fabric, right? Because this is a very nerve-wracking, at this point, even for me, you know, it's an expensive fabric, I don't have any more, so if I make a mistake, I'm finished. I mean, it's not the end of the world, we just get more fabric and lose profit, right? So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to fold this to the to the best fold that I can get, what I mean by that is get all these puckers out and my fingers are going right to this post, which is about a, a two inch post. Okay, now when I'm looking at this, I'm saying to myself, what do I want this to do? I want to pleat on both sides of that post to the back an equal amount of fabric, right? And a pleat after it's, after it's done. Or, if you can visualize out in space here, after I'm cut, if I do a good job, my points should meet out here behind the chair, okay, after it's cut. So knowing that, I hope that helps. Some people like to draw a line. If you're a newbie, you might want to do that. You might want to draw a chalk line for us to figure out the angle instead of putting that angle in your mind. Okay? But what I'm doing is I'm visualizing the fabric, what I want the fabric to do, how much fabric I need to do that. So I determine the angle. I tell you the mistake that people make is they, they, they folded it and they think that the point here is the right way to go. That's really bad. If you did that, you wouldn't have enough fabric on this side. Does anybody see that? Do you guys see that? Um, so you have to come down to here, and what my goal is, I'm going to the center, center point, that's my goal right now with this cut, the center point, and I'm not going all the way. So my angle is to the center of that post, okay, so here I go, I'm going to stop about two inches from that post, and now I have to make two cuts to the left, one to the left, one to the right. They're not the width of the post, but they are almost to the end, probably about a, a half of an inch from the end of the post. Well, let's just see what this looks like. You, you test it first. Push it through and test it. Wow. I tell you what, I think, I think that was a pretty good first cut. My right, I like, I'm happy with the right side, and I'm not tucked in there yet, but the, the left side, I'm just going to a little bit more, probably about a quarter of an inch more, and I think I'll be happy with that. So I'm going to take my, you can have a regulator uh, or a needle to pull that in the middle down. I'll show you. Push it in. Okay, now I'm going to bring it up and show you. Let's see how good of a job we did here by pointing out. You see that? I'm just gonna, we have more fabric on this side. I'm just going to test this for a second, just to show you. See where the points are? See how good we are? We have plenty of fabric on both sides. See, that's your goal. So now I even have to cut this down in order to get a good pleat. That's good, having too much fabric, right, after you cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get eye level with this. Taking my regulator and I'm pushing the I'm pushing the fabric down as clean as I can get. And then I'm gonna come to the back. I'm gonna trim this down the side. 
I'm going to fold what people call it a pleat. Pleat is a folded piece of fabric. And instead of coming right here on the back, I'm going to, I'm going to tack this way. I'm going to continue my tacking because it's back. And then I'm going to work my pleat. Okay, instead of trying to get the whole thing done at once, right? See that? I'm going to do one, one side of this chair. So we got a, a little bit of a pucker that I'm not quite happy with. So what I'm going to try to do is work that in. That actually went in pretty good. And then uh, now we're going to focus just on this side of the chair, these, this, the back cut and the front cut on each part. So what I'm going to do now is now um, I need to pull a little bit more uh, to the end here, right about here, to get a proper read on this cut. So pulling and I'm going to staple. Okay. Now my fabric's tight enough in order to cut this cut. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm aiming for the middle of this, of this post, but I'm not going all the way. It's important not to go all the way. I'm going to back off about two inches. I'm going to make a, a cut to the left side, a cut to the right side. I'll show you. See that? And let's see how this works. Well, that worked out beautiful. Just to show you, it's working out great. See? All right, let's come this way. I want to show you this side. Um, so the only reason I put I only put one, a couple of staples in there because that might have to come out because we have to pull this this way. So what, what I'm trying to do is let's not focus on the pleat here right now. Let's focus on the side here. So I need to stretch this, stretch this this way to the front and get a staple there, and a few staples there. And then what I'm going to do is make sure your, your cotton doesn't come underneath your staple work. Stapling, I'm trying to torque the fabric to the, to the front. I'm stretching this way and this way. Two-way stretch. Yeah, we talked about that a lot. I'm going to just trim a little bit of this cotton out because it's peeking through. We don't want that. Okay. Now I'm ready to get my pleat here. I'm going to trim this up a little bit more. I'm going to fold this. And I'm going to get this secure. And then I'm going to get this pleated. Okay, now, the only thing we have to do now, I'm satisfied by the way that I don't have to be pulling this anymore to the front. I'm just going to fill in uh, my staple work there, but I do want to show you what I'm going to do on the front, which is a, this is going to get not one pleat because we have a, we have a curve on the front. So usually when it's curved, you get two, two pleats and I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come this way a little bit more with some staple work. And I'm going to come this way a little bit more with some staple work. And now this here, we're going to come right into the middle. We're going to try to get an equal amount of fabric on both sides. I'm going to staple that. And then look, I'm going to make what we call a V pleat in the front. Pleat like that, pleat like that. Now isn't that beautiful? And this all gets trimmed. I'm going to be putting double piping on it. So I, I hope you guys learned something. And I just want to mention that the online classes, uh, the difference between what I do on, on film here with the YouTube videos by myself and the online classes to me are night and day. And, and, um, and it's because these apprentices are asking me all the right questions as they're upholstering. And, um, you know, when we slow, the, the whole work is slowed down so that you, you're going through the process, the whole process from A to Z on, the, on this furniture. Uh, even on this, there's things here that I probably missed, but I, I wouldn't have missed if there was a student here. So I really do think they're great value. I think it just check it out, broadwayupholsteryschool.com, and see what we got up there. And if you're enjoying these YouTube videos, that's fine too. That's great. We love YouTube. We want people, though, to subs at least subscribe. If you're getting some satisfaction out of these videos, please push that subscribe button because that's what keeps us going, really. That's what keeps us in engaged. And if you want more of these videos, continue to do that. I've mentioned this in other videos. I'll, I'll mention it again. 
we know that 10 times more people are watching our videos without and they're constant they're watching constantly and they're not subscribing so one day they could all just go i mean we we need we need constant support we love youtube we want to keep it going if that's all we do that's great if are, but we love our online classes too just check it out and um we'll see you next time thanks